Shalom saudara-saudara berjumpa kembali bersama dengan saya di Tari Pasaribu apa kabar kita semua saya percaya kabar kita semua pasti baik-baik saja saudara-saudara pada pagi hari ini saya mau bagikan kebenaran firman Tuhan bagi kita semua bagaimana 2 Petrus 3 ayat 10 mengatakan bahwa Tuhan tidak lalai menepatinya sekalipun ada orang menganggapnya suatu kelalaian tetapi Tuhan sabar terhadap kita supaya tidak ada seorang pun yang binasa melainkan beroleh hidup yang kekal saudara-saudara Tuhan tidak mau orang-orang yang murtad mati dalam dosanya karena itu Alkitab mengatakan Tuhan tidak menghendaki kematian orang fasik tetapi Tuhan menghendaki pertobatan mereka saudara-saudara di video kali ini saya bagikan video cuplikan bagaimana ada seorang mualaf yang meninggalkan Yesus Kristus tetapi Tuhan tidak biarkan Tuhan selamatkan orang tersebut sehingga percaya kembali kepada Yesus Kristus. Mari kita simak cuplikan berikut ini. Hello, peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Brother Ismail. I've been a Muslim for 16 years. But in the past few years, I have been bothered by some reoccurring issues which have forced me to question my Islamic faith. And recently, I have decided to finally leave Islam and in this video, I will explain why. Now, I don't think it's fair for Muslims to consider me as some kind of traitor or sellout because over the years, I've done my best to be faithful and loyal to Islam. I did not play games with Islam and I took my Islamic faith very seriously. And whenever I found any Islamic teaching difficult, problematic or controversial, I always did my best to research the issue for myself and for my fellow Muslims to resolve it. I certainly was not perfect, but I think very few people would question my sincerity to Allah, Muhammad, and to Islam. So I can assure you that I was committed to this religion called Islam. Now let me address the title of this video, the question why I left Islam. The answer to this question is the Quran and Muhammad and their teachings on moral standards and conduct. You see, over the past few years, I have found that I am no longer able to defend the Quran and especially Muhammad's moral, morals and conduct. In the past, I have done my best to defend Islam and in particular to defend Muhammad from the claims and charges made against him. I tried my best to love Muhammad and I can prove I stood up for him and defended him many times. For example, I produced videos like Was Muhammad Merciful? where I tried to provide examples of Muhammad's good character. And my video Who are the Islam haters? where I tried to refute and expose the anti-Islamic critics and I made many more videos in which I defended Islam and Muhammad. Most of the time I was successful in defending Muhammad against those who were attacking his character as I was well educated in Islam and I studied Islamic apologetics for years. However, while I was defending Islam, I have noticed, I had noticed many of the criticisms were actually valid and based on authentic early Islamic sources. And I found myself at a loss to find adequate, honest responses to them. In the coming videos, I shall share with you many of the allegations made against the Quran and Muhammad that I could no longer defend. But for the sake of brevity, in this video I will provide you with one example on the topic of sexual immorality. As shocking as it may seem, both the Quran and Muhammad teach that it's permissible, halal, to capture and rape female war captives. Even if these women are married, and their non-Muslim husbands are still alive. So let's investigate the Islamic sources to see what they say. The Quran in chapter 4 verses 22 and 23 informs Muslim men about the categories of women which they are forbidden to marry. But in ayah number 24 we read, Also forbidden are women already married except those whom your right hands possess. So we see here in the Quran an exception, an example where it is permissible, halal, for a Muslim man to marry a woman who already has a husband. 
But who are these women described as being owned or possessed by your right hand? For the answer, let us turn to the most famous commentator on the Quran, Ibn Kathir, who, while commenting on Quran chapter 4, 24, said the following, quote, Allah said, وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ إِلَّا مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ Also forbidden are women already married except those whom your right hands possess. The ayah means you are prohibited from marrying women who are already married. إِلَّا مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ Except those whom your right hands possess, meaning except those whom you acquire through war, for you are allowed such women after making sure they are not pregnant. Imam Ahmed recorded that Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said, We captured some women from the area of Al-Tas who were already married, and we disliked having sexual relations with them because they already had husbands. So we asked the Prophet about this matter, and this ayah was revealed. وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ إِلَّا مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ Also forbidden are women already married, except those whom your right hands possess. Consequently, we had sexual relations with these women. This is the recording collected by At-Tirmidhi and Nasa'i, Ibn Jarir and Muslim in his Sahih. Now at this point, maybe you're in a state of shock. Maybe you're even saying to yourself, this is impossible. The glorious Quran and the noble Prophet Muhammad would never teach such sexual immorality. Or maybe you're thinking, there must be some other more positive interpretation to the Quran, chapter 4, verse 24. Or maybe you're even trying to convince yourself that the great Islamic scholar and the most famous Quran commentator, Ibn Kathir, is completely wrong and he has no idea what he's talking about. Brothers and sisters, I wish all of that were true, but unfortunately, when we investigate the matter further, things just get worse. For example, we read in the following hadith, in Sunan Abi Dawood, volume 2, hadith number 2155, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri narrated, the messenger of Allah, meaning Muhammad, sent a military expedition to Al-Tas on the day of Hunayn, and they met their enemy, fought them, and defeated them. They took captives. فَكَأَنَّ أُنَاسًا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ تَحَرَّجُوا مِنْ غِشْيَانِهِنَّ مِنْ أَجْلِ أَزْوَاجِهِنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ but some of the companions of the Messenger of Allah were reluctant or felt uncomfortable to have relations, meaning sex, with them, meaning the female captives, because of their pagan husbands. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فِي ذَلِكْ وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ إِلَّا مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ So Allah revealed the Quranic verse, and forbidden are women already married except those whom your right hands possess. And this is again uh, Quran chapter 4 verse 24 as we said. أَيْ فَهُنَّ لَهُمْ حَلَالٌ إِذَا أَنْقَضَتْ عِدَّتُهُنْ Meaning they are lawful or allowed for them when they complete their waiting period. And this hadith, my brothers and sisters, is صحيح or authentic. So this hadith informs us that the Muslim soldiers had a problem. They wanted to have sex with the female captives, but these women were already married and they had husbands who were still living. So Muhammad then claims to receive a revelation from Allah that instructs the Muslim men to wait for a period of time to ensure that the female captives are not pregnant. And then after that period, these Muslim men are allowed to go and have sex with these married women. Now ask yourself this question. How would you feel if your wife or any woman in your family was captured by some enemy soldiers, then forced to divorce her husband, then forced to marry one of those enemy soldiers, then forced to have sex with that enemy soldier whom she obviously hated. And all of this happened while her husband was still alive. Do you think that your wife, your sister, your daughter, or your mother would agree to have these things forced upon her in humiliation? 
No sane person in his or her right mind could defend the Qur'an and Muhammad on this issue. This is nothing more than legalized rape of married women. And I cannot believe that this is from God. So, therefore, I am rejecting the Qur'an and Muhammad on this issue. Now you have some idea why I left Islam. And in the coming videos, I hope to share more reasons with you, because there are many. Thank you for watching, and may God bless you and me and us all. Amen. Puji Tuhan. Puji Tuhan, saudara-saudara, baru saja kita menyimak video cuplikat. Bagaimana seorang mualaf ini adalah seorang pembela, yaitu pembela agamanya dan juga pembela nabinya. Tetapi, saudaraku, dalam proses perjalanannya waktu, dia menyadari bahwa apa yang dibelanya selama ini, ya tidak bisa lagi dibelanya, karena dia merasa, ya itu tidak sesuai dengan firman Tuhan. Saudara-saudara kasih Tuhan, itulah kasih Tuhan kepada seorang mualaf ini, sehingga dia kembali percaya kepada Yesus Kristus. Saudara-saudara, begitu juga dengan kita, dimanapun kita berada saat ini, mungkin ada kita yang sudah meninggalkan Tuhan, ya, sudah jauh dari Tuhan, bahkan sudah sangat jauh meninggalkan Tuhan. Mari kembalilah kepada Yesus Kristus, karena hanya dialah keselamatan, hanya dialah jalan ke sorga satu-satunya, dan hanya dialah hidup yang kekal. Di dalam Tuhan Yesus Kristus tidak ada mudah-mudahan, tidak ada semoga, tetapi di dalam Yesus Kristus ada kepastian hidup yang kekal. Saudara-saudara, kembalilah percaya kepada Yesus Kristus. Dia mengasihi kita semua. Ada perumpamaan di Alkitab bagaimana ada seratus, seratus domba, ya. Satu di antaranya hilang, maka dia akan meninggalkan 99 untuk mencari satu domba yang tersesat. Apakah engkau adalah domba yang satu itu yang tersesat? Kembalilah kepada Yesus Kristus, Tuhan mengasihi saudara. Puji Tuhan, saya pendeta dari Pasar Ibu Nur Diri, Tuhan Yesus berkati. Shalom.